Welcome to Cybergenetics True Allele Casework, a computer that interprets DNA evidence. This overview shows how an analyst can easily solve a 30% two-person mixture using True Allele to infer the genotype and calculate a match statistic. A True Allele analyst uses their Mac or Windows viewer software to solve DNA problems. Laboratory data comes in through the Analyze module and is uploaded to the True Allele server through the Data module. The analyst uses the Request module to ask forensic questions about the data. The True Allele server then thoroughly and objectively calculates the answers. After True Allele statistical search is done, the analyst uses the Review module to see solutions and the Report module to prepare a case report. We start in analysis, seeing how True Allele ensures data quality for a 96 well plate. The computer finds the DNA length and quantity of every data peak. The analyst then takes a minute to visually review the computer's sizing results. True Allele alerts the user to any potential data issues. For example, when the ladder interpolation rule fires, the analyst opens a ladder check window to assess the ladders and remove failures. There are many True Allele visualizations, but a user only opens a window when a rule has detected a problem. So, after a few minutes, the analyst has reviewed all the quality check data and uploads the plate to the True Allele database. In Viewer's Request module, the analyst prepares forensic questions for True Allele to answer. The user first downloads their case data from the True Allele database. Here we see PowerPlex 16 data for a 30% mixture. True Allele can solve three and four person mixtures, but this 250 picogram sample only has two contributors. At Locus CSF, we see three allele peaks. Selecting the injection data, the analyst creates an evidence item. The user can give additional information about the mixture for more tailored true allele processing. From the evidence item, the user creates an interpretation request. Choosing the number of contributors, the analyst tells the computer to solve for two unknown genotypes. Additional true allele requests could be set up now testing for other numbers of contributors, making duplicate computer runs or using a known victim. Let's just focus on the two unknown question. The analyst's request is uploaded to the True Allele database and will be solved by the next available processor. A True Allele supercomputer can have 4, 8, 16, or more parallel processors, each working independently on its own request. True Allele problem solving is completely objective. The computer does not know the suspect genotype and so has no idea what the right answer should be. True Allele thoroughly examines all the quantitative peak data and thoroughly considers tens of thousands of possible genotype mixture solutions. The review module gives the analyst a detailed look at True Allele answers. Every True Allele module can show the DNA sequencer data signals. True Allele determines how much of each DNA contributor is in a mixture. The computer uses this mixture weight to separate out contributor genotypes. Like any statistical variable, mixture weight has uncertainty and so is a probability distribution. The center of the bell curve gives the contributor's mixture fraction, while its spread shows mixture variation across locus data. True Allele solves for genotypes by trying out many possible solutions. For each contributor, the computer proposes a genotype allele pair. Adding up different amounts of these genotypes forms a pattern that can help explain the data. Considering other factors, like PCR stutter and allele imbalance, can improve the explanation. Genotypes that explain the data well have a high likelihood, while genotypes in poor explanations have lower probability. By thoroughly considering tens of thousands of patterns, 
true allele finds the genotype probability distribution. The genotype is the key variable for genetic identification. Inferred from real data, genotypes have uncertainty, scientifically expressed as probability. Focusing on the 30% minor contributor and drilling down to the CSF locus, we see the probability of different allele pairs in a horizontal bar chart. This is the evidence genotype, objectively inferred without any knowledge of a particular suspect, that preserves, through probability, all the identification information in the peak height data. True allele matches are made in the report module. These genotype matches can be investigative, providing a fully informative evidence database that replaces CODIS, evidentiary, computing DNA match statistics in a case, or done to validate a DNA process. Let's see how viewer can help prepare a case report on DNA evidence. A DNA match is a comparison of three genotypes, evidence versus suspect relative to a population of alternatives. In the population, there are dozens of possible CSF alleles, hence hundreds of possible allele pair genotype values. A few of these population genotype probabilities are shown as brown bars in the vertical bar chart. After examining DNA mixture data, most of these possibilities become infeasible, leaving only a handful of evidence genotype allele pairs. The blue bars show true allele genotype probabilities for the minor contributor at the CSF locus. The relative heights of blue to brown show the change in probability at each allele pair, that is, what we have learned by examining the evidence. We now consider, for the first time in our objective true allele review, a suspect genotype, indicated by the green bar, and make a match comparison. The DNA match statistic, or likelihood ratio, focuses on just the suspect's allele pair. Visually, we see at allele pair 1212 that the evidence probability of 28% is three times taller than the 9% population prevalence. That probability ratio, the match statistic at CSF, tells us that a match between evidence and suspect is three times more probable than coincidence. The match window shows true allele statistic at the CSF locus, conservatively accounting for shared co-ancestry with 1% theta, slightly lowers the match information. Looking at all 15 loci, there is support for a match at every locus. Multiplying together the locus numbers gives a match statistic of 499 quadrillion. The match locus table breaks the statistic down for each locus across different ethnic populations. True allele's combined match statistics are on the bottom row. The analyst pastes these numbers into their case report and writes, a match between the evidence and suspect is 499 quadrillion times more probable than coincidence.